The New York Times breaking the news in the last few minutes that the FBI has raided the office of Donald Trump's longtime lawyer, Michael Cohen. Cohen has been in the news on two fronts in the last week. One, for his payment to porn star Stormy Daniels, and two, because he is of interest to special counsel Bob Mueller. Let me read a little bit from this story that just crossed our desks. The FBI on Monday raided the offices of President Trump's longtime personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, seizing records related to several topics, including payments to pornographic film actress. Federal prosecutors in Manhattan obtained a search warrant after receiving a referral from the special counsel, Robert S. Mueller, according to Mr. Cohen's lawyer, who called the search, quote, completely inappropriate and unnecessary. The search does not appear to be directly related to Mr. Mueller's investigation, but likely resulted from information he had uncovered and gave to prosecutors in New York. Uh, let me read one more quote. From, from the piece from Cohen's lawyer who says, quote, today the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York executed a series of search warrants and seized the privileged communications between my client Michael Cohen and his clients, said Stephen Ryan, his lawyer. I've been advised by federal prosecutors that the New York action is in part a referral by the Office of Special, Special Counsel Robert Mueller. Uh, let's just remind our viewers again, as we said at the top, Cohen at the center of two um, political and legal storms for Donald Trump, both the payment to porn star Stormy Daniels, and he is said to be of interest to special counsel Robert Mueller for his uh, dealings for Trump organization and questions around any ties to Russia. Peter Baker, White, chief White House correspondent for The New York Times, is with us. Um, Peter, I know this is your colleague's story, but um, any sense of, of uh, from the White House that something like this could have been imminent after all of the headlines and after the president himself going to the back of Air Force One at the end of last week and when asked about payments to that porn star said, you're going to have to ask Michael Cohen. A lot of people saw that as throwing his longtime personal attorney under the bus. Yeah, it did sound like that at the time. Of course, he's trying to distance himself from all of this uh, as if he had nothing to do with it. And that's, uh, you know, obviously in his interest. But it's not, it's both surprising and not surprising that we see this uh, action happening today. This, this, this case has raised all sorts of legal issues now for weeks. Uh, what kind of, uh, you know, legal basis is there for this kind of payment? Does it violate campaign finance laws, as an example? Are there other laws that might be at issue? And in that sense, uh, you know, prosecutors obviously have decided that they're going to look at these questions. And it's interesting that Robert Mueller is the one who referred them there. It's, it also shows that he has decided that there are limits to his jurisdiction and his mandate. He's going to stick to things that are closer related to the Russia probe and try not to uh, go out, color outside the lines in effect. But that doesn't mean that things he finds out are just going to go wasted or left on the uh, cutting room floor. He's going to find other avenues to make sure authorities look at them. And Peter Baker, you bring up the central argument that people who are philosophically opposed to special counsel investigations in general always raise, that, that they, they can become derailed. Um, the, the special counsel investigation that you covered of the White House in which I worked was about the leaking of Valerie Plame, a CIA operative. The person who was indicted was Scooter Libby for leaking or for, for perjury. Um, this seems to be the kind of thing that may reignite the critics of special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation. But your, your colleague makes clear that this was referred, that this was executed um, by the Southern District of New York, and that, that, you know, a crime's a crime, and if crimes were committed in the, in the payment or the hush money, and I think Stormy Daniels' lawyer has raised a lot of questions about possible intimidation of Ms. Daniels, who um, was, she described in that 60 Minutes interview that was viewed by millions and millions of Americans being uh, followed and sort of jumped when she was getting in her car at a parking lot at a fitness center with her young infant. So th this, this could be related to any one of those things. Is that right? Yeah, there are certainly different aspects to this story that raise legal issues that you could see being uh, of interest to a prosecutor. And I think to your point about Robert Mueller, I imagine if it had been the other way around. Imagine if he were the one uh, conducting this raid or conducting a new investigation that looked into the Stormy Daniels case. Everybody would say, well, this is an example of, of mission creep, of a special prosecutor just going you know, anywhere without any boundaries. Instead, what he's chosen to do here is say, look, this is not within my mandate. This is not related to the thing 
things that I'm supposed to be looking at. So I'm going to turn it over to the regular Justice Department, the regular U.S. attorney who is supposed to look at things in the, in the uh, city of New York, and he or she can decide, I don't even happen to know who it is, can decide uh, whether or not there is uh, a case here to be uh, investigated. And so in that sense, he's probably saved himself a little bit of political grief.